Hi, everybody, and welcome to Fab Talks. I'm Rosemary, and today I'm excited to share a second Dollar Tree Organization Hacks video. And since there were 37 ideas in the first video, I thought I'd go ahead and go for 38 in this one. Now, although most of these ideas would make great organization and storage options all around your home, I'm going to be focusing on using them in work from home or school from home spaces, since so many of us are struggling to get organized in one or both of these scenarios but I will also be giving suggestions for other uses throughout this video. Also, this video will be followed shortly by other videos focusing on areas like the kitchen, bath, closet, living spaces, garage, etc. So please leave me a comment below and let me know which areas you would prefer to see next. And with each new video, I will be shooting to add one more to the count. So please like and share to cheer me on and also subscribe so that you can see the new ones as soon as they're published. And with that, let's jump right in. Oh my goodness. I know that there's a good possibility that so many kitchen tables, countertops, and other spaces all around the world may very well be looking a little bit like this with multiple children's schoolwork, your own work, bills, and the like cluttering up every possible surface. So first let's tackle all that paper. You might remember these makeup palette holders from my first organization video, which use Dollar Tree napkin holders hung on the wall with removable hooks. Turns out they also make great file holders as well. And then like many of the ideas in this video, you can make multiples and hang them horizontally, vertically, or both to suit your needs. Now, if you're looking for a more out of sight option, this over the door file hanger may be just the right solution. To make, I took one of these pocket chart schedulers and three of these file organizers. After removing the white cardboard inserts, I took some E6000 glue and just from that third pocket down, ran a thin stream of the E6000 all the way around. Then I took my first envelope and inserted it into that third pocket and then just sealed down around along where the E6000 was. And now I'm going to add some more E6000 to the second envelope and count down two of the little pockets and just insert that second envelope there. Again, pressing down into the sides to secure that E6000, then adding some to the top there and then going ahead with some E6000 again on the envelope itself, then going into that last pocket and just sealing down the E6000 all the way around, also adding there to the top. And just to let you know, these do come in various colors in case you wanted to go with a multicolored file or wanted to choose another color. And then I'm just gonna hang the file on a Dollar Tree over the door hanger. Now I did have to use some zip ties to extend the holes a little bit because they did not line up right with the hooks. So just adding a few zip ties there did the trick. And then here it is on the inside of a nearby closet door, ready to take all that mess and file it away. Now you may be saying, great, you took care of the paper, but where in the world am I going to create a workspace? I want my kitchen table back. What about a wall office? I recently made one and let me show you what I did. Okay, so this is a wall in my living room and it used to have a table and a accent chair in this space, but instead I replaced it with this shelf for my monitor. And then on the shelf, I have a little clip on light for test lighting. And then underneath of that, I have this, what used to be an entryway table. So it's nice and thin, it's only about 13 inches wide. So it slides right underneath and I can pull it out when it's in use. Otherwise it's tucked away there underneath the shelf and out of the way. And then underneath, I do have space for a printer and a tower that is an all-in-one computer, so I don't have a tower. But other than that, you can see there's not really much space. There's not much desktop space or drawer space. So I'm gonna to need to make use of the sides of that table, underneath the shelf, all around and along the walls. The first thing I'm going to do is make an under the shelf pen and pencil holder by using these great little canisters I got from the Dollar Tree. Now what's so great about these is that flat top that I can use my wonderful Gorilla Glue mounting tape. I love this stuff. I have been using this all over the house and I will leave a link for this in the description box below, but you can get it on Amazon and multiple other places. I think pretty much anywhere Gorilla Glue is sold. You just place the sticky side down and then there's a plastic piece on top that you just unpeel when you're ready to place it. To add some storage space to the size of my table, I wanna use some of these removable adhesive hooks from the Dollar Tree that I've painted black. 
Now, in addition to that, I'm going to use one of these calendars that come in this plastic pocket and you can pull it in and out and it has the little holes at the top so you can hook it on to the sides. I am so old school. I really do like having a physical calendar. I know everyone else is on their phones, but there's something about that physical calendar I just want to have. Then I'm going to be using one of these pencil holders. They come with a suction cup on the back. Um, I'm actually going to be using it for some post-it notes and probably with a hook as well. And then I'm always losing my ruler, so I want to create a little home for that one as well. And now here you can see my under the shelf Gorilla Tape mounted pen and pencil holder, as well as my calendar there at the side, and then the post-it notes and ruler hanging on the other side. And then I tidied up the front by putting the printer paper in a Dollar Tree letter bin and adding a few Dollar Tree storage containers and magazine files. Since I have virtually no drawer or desk space, I wanted to create a little pegboard for items like scissors and tape. So I'm going to use these peg and S hooks I get from Walmart. They come in a pack of four for about $1.58. And then you can see where they fit perfectly right into this Dollar Tree grill topper pan. Next, I want to paint a black border around the rim of the pan. So I'm going to first prep it with some Mod Podge and then paint it with some black chalk paint. To attach the pan to the wall, I'm going to use these removable adhesive strips that I purchased from Walmart. This large 12 pair package costs about $5 at Walmart. And I'm going to take two sets and then attach them together and then peel back the one side and attach it to the side of the pan. Do the same for the other set and then when I'm ready to attach it to the wall, I'll just unpeel that second set and just place it where I want it. And then here you can see the paint and pan and a couple other items I'd like to add to my pegboard, including this little magnetic container I got from the Dollar Tree, this magnetic canister from the Dollar Tree. This is a Dollar Tree stapler that I attach some magnets to, and then also one of these retractable cord clips that I'm also going to place a magnet behind and that's going to hold a cord that's always falling down behind my computer. And then I'm going to use another one of those suction cup pencil holders. I'm going to take that uh, suction cup off again. I'm either going to do it with a magnet, but I'm probably going to do it with a hook on the wall and I'm going to use that for my phone. And then here's the completed pegboard with all the items attached, including the hook with the scissors and the tape. And then also the S hook down there at the bottom holding a Dollar Tree bucket with some glue. Now, I am one who really does like having in and out files to sort through what needs work and what is ready to be filed or mailed. But since I don't have any desk space, I needed to find a clever way I could hang them on the wall. So I again took some Dollar Tree removable hooks and painted them black. And then I'm going to lay the hook face down on top of the basket so that the hook part goes through and the base of the hook sits on the flat part of the bin. I'm also going to add a little E6000 glue to hold it in place and then replace it there again with a little hook piece kind of going through that hole in the basket. I'll do the same to a hook for the bottom of the basket on the one side and then another hook to the other side of the bottom and then one again at the top. So four hooks all together and then they go on the wall like this. I also add it to labels that I made from my label maker. One says needs work, the other to be filed. And those bins also work great for newspapers, magazines, even cutting boards and food wrap rolls. But I'll show you those in a future video. Next, I wanted to make a file holder slash bookshelf. And to do that, I'm going to use this Dollar Tree sign and this Dollar Tree dish rack. Now, because this dish rack has a thick vinyl coating, I'm going to need to sand that down pretty well. I'm also going to want to sand off the glitter from this sign. And here is an example of what will happen if you just go ahead and paint this rack without sanding down the surface. It basically just scrapes right off. Now you don't have to paint this and I just painted it because I wanted it to match my other pieces. And it does look quite nice white, which I will show you um, in a little bit. But when you are sanding, like I said, you really want to get down um, to that surface, have a nice gritty surface like I'm showing you here. And that should hold the paint pretty well. Now, when you do go to paint, if you're using spray paint, you want to do light coats and let them rest at least one hour between coats. Um, and then just keep spraying very light coats until the surface is coated. If you wanted to use brush paint, I would highly suggest chalk paint as that seems to have the best staying power. 
But before I paint, I want to attach my shelf to the rack. And so I'm going to take the bottom legs of the rack and bend them in slightly. Remove the little rubber foot and add some E6000 glue, as well as some hot glue to the legs of the rack. And then just take my sign and place that face down on the legs. Then I just added a couple of books to hold it in place. And after it's completely dried, I spray painted it with some black spray paint. To attach the shelves to the wall, I'm going to use these closet made brackets that come 12 to a pack for about $5 and include the anchors and screws. You can get these at stores like Lowe's or Home Depot. I actually got these on Amazon and I'll provide the link below. I also picked up a couple of these 8 inch shelf brackets for 97 cents at Walmart, but Lowe's and Home Depot sell these as well. Then I just painted everything black to match the shelf. And here's the finished shelf and now I just want to attach those brackets to the bottom and then you'll notice that there is both a long end and a short end on the bracket and it's the long end that we want to attach to the bottom of the shelf so I'm just going to use some E6000 glue and I'm going to apply that to both of the brackets again on the long end and then let those sit face down until those brackets are adhered and now it's time to attach to the wall but you'll notice that these brackets are a little big for this shelf and since this is going to be holding heavier items I do want to make that a little better fit so I'm going to just take some black electrical tape and wind that around a few times to make that a little thicker at the top where the bracket will be attached and give us a nice snug fit. And then since I will be placing heavy items on this shelf, I will definitely want to use these anchors that came with the closet made brackets. And then I want to use these Mad Dog anchor screws for the shelf brackets underneath. These screws are a combo anchor and screw, and so you don't need the separate anchor for these. But of course, no anchor is necessary if you plan to screw into a stud, which is almost never the case for me since I'm always wanting to put something where there isn't a stud present. So let's see if that's the case here. I've taken my level and I want to measure out and mark a line where I want to hang my. I will use a dry erase marker to do that and then I need to go find my stud. And here is a quick and easy Dollar Tree version of a DIY stud finder I first saw on DIY Dork which I will link below. You simply take two Dollar Tree magnets and a piece of Dollar Tree twine and just add some E6000 glue to the middle of one of the magnets and then join the two magnets together. Once the glue is dry, your stud finder is ready. And all you need to do is swing the magnet back and forth in front of the wall where you want to find the stud. So let's see, that green line is where I want the shelf to be. And of course, the stud is outside of that line. And then I can measure 16 inches from that point to see if maybe I can get a stud on the other side. But no, looks like it's anchor city for me. So first I'm going to need to drill a hole for my anchor. And that means I'm going to have to pull out my favorite little drill driver, my skill twist from works. I love this thing. If you've watched my videos before, you know, this is one of my favorite things. If I was part of the Von Trapp family, it would be like little brown packages tied up with string and a skill twist. I even have a name for him. I call him Zippy Zip. And it was terrible. Zippy Zip was missing the other day. I could not find him. I literally started to hyperventilate, but I did find him. He was in the garage, all safe and sound. Anyway, after I drilled my holes, I went back with the anchors and just tapped them in with a hammer. Then I screwed the brackets in place and took out my level once again, just to make sure that everything was set up and nice and straight. And then I just placed my brackets on the other side and marked with a pencil where I need it to drill. But before securing the bracket to the other side, I just went back with a wet cloth and removed that Expo marker. And then to secure my bottom brackets, I'm going to go ahead and use those screw and anchor combos. Now I could use a traditional separate screw and anchor, but I'd have to mark everything and take everything off and it'd be a big hassle. So for $2 and change, I'm just going to go ahead and use those anchor combos. And then to hold my files, I'm going to use some of these Dollar Tree magazine files. These are the cardboard ones that just come flat and you just fold the bottoms in and they create great little files and three fit perfectly in the space, but I'm only going to use two so I can also show you how well it holds these two heavy textbooks without any issues. And not sure if you noticed, but those top legs on the rack serve as bookends. And of course you can make multiples and run them either vertically, horizontally, or both. And for about six bucks, you have a great little file holder slash bookshelf complete with bookends. Great for anywhere in your home, from bedrooms to your living room, even in your kitchen to hold your cookbooks. And then just a few more things for my office wall. I'm going to take this Dollar Tree canvas and Dollar Tree headbands 
and I'm going to just place the headbands on top of the canvas to create a little note and mail holder. I'm also going to be using this Dollar Tree dry erase board. And then here you can see the finished wall office and you can see where I also added a chair there next to the desk that tucks away nicely under the bookshelf. I could pull it out when I need it. And here is another look at the desk area and you can see that above the computer I added an acrylic calendar and memo board from a previous DIY. I'll link that in the description. And then here's another look at the wall organizer side, now complete with the letter holder and Dollar Tree whiteboard. And now on to some more colorful options with these labeled subject sorter bins. To make, I took some of these Dollar Tree book bins, as well as some of these colorful Dollar Tree stickers to simply make the labels for each subject. And now here you can see them on one of the dish rack shelves, this time in white. And I think it looks a lot better with the white. Now, I also just wanted to point out with this bookshelf, you do have the option to make it a two tier bookshelf. Just add another Dollar Tree sign to the top. Of course, paint it the color that you like and then just glue it there on top. But remember, this top shelf will only be able to hold lighter weight objects since those legs would definitely bend underneath of the weight of something heavy. But of course, if you don't wanna to have to worry about that, you can just eliminate the dish rack and just use the Dollar Tree sign on the 99 cent brackets, gluing them in place, and you can make yourself a whole treasure trove of little $3 shelves that you can arrange in whichever way you need to fit your space. And if you're wondering, that little nub planter is from one of my West Elm dupe videos which I will link below. For this next combo I'll use a dish rack and some of these thick rubber bands. Now Dollar Tree does sell these. I think I got these ones though at Walmart and all I want to do is just wrap them around the legs the way I'm doing here. Put on about six or so bands to each side and kind of just flatten them out and then I'm going to attach it to the wall with the removable hooks as shown here or brackets if I wanted to use for heavier items. And then I can just put my Dollar Tree storage containers in and they fit perfect. Another option would be to again use the dish rack, this time paired with this Dollar Tree basket, which fits perfectly inside. Then I can attach to the wall with either hooks or brackets, depending on the weight of the items. And then the basket slides right in. These baskets also come in different colors in case you do want to mix and match. I like the other combos in this video, you can make it in multiples and create all types of different modular configurations. I find a thin vertical strip works perfectly to create some storage in a small unused space. Speaking of vertical storage, I just love this skinny bookshelf made with a corner Dollar Tree rack and some Dollar Tree craft sticks. So all I did was take some E6000 glue and apply a strip to the front and back bottom of this rack. Then I took the craft sticks and just slid them through the slots and snapped them into place. I did that all the way across what's now going to be the bottom of my shelf. And then I weighted it down on that one end until the glue was dry. And then since I intend to hang heavy things on this, I am going to be attaching this to the wall with the brackets. And you can see how it holds books as well as bins and it makes a great organize. As a former homeschool mom, I know that it's not only important to organize your stuff, but also your day. Making a checklist like this helps to ensure everyone stays on track and tasks get completed on time. You can print one up that suits your needs and then place it in one of these Dollar Tree reusable dry erase pockets so that you only need to print up one and then reuse it day after day. They come in various different colors so you can keep one for each child. They also make great book bags and they can also be color coordinated to sort and make sure you have organized each child's reading materials. And then these pockets can be easily hung on the wall using the little hole on the top. But these are not just for school children. You could also use for things like bills or medicine tracking or in diets for macro and calorie counting. Another way to create color coordinated organization is to give everyone their own magnetic board. You can use for things like supplies, notes, and reminders. For supplies, you can use the actual boxes or pick up a Dollar Tree container. Now, all you need to do is add some Dollar Tree magnets to the back and you have yourself a magnetic item. Or you can also get items with magnets on them already from the Dollar Tree. To prepare my Dollar Tree pizza pan for painting, I'm first going to wipe it down with some vinegar. And then I'm going to take some chalk paint 
and if I'm going to just be painting the rim, I'm good to go at this stage. Now, if I did want to paint the entire surface, I would first need to do a coat of Mod Podge on top of the metal, and then I can either spray or use the chalk paint to paint. To attach the pan to the wall, I'm again going to use those removable adhesive strips. I'm going to create two sets and place one at the top and one at the bottom, and remove the paper backing when I am ready to place it on the wall. And then here is one paint it in white because I actually happen to have one of these available, but you can see how cute they would look in some brightly colored finishes. But you can see how these little magnetic discs would be great all around the house, in the kitchen, bedroom, even at the entryway. Decluttering surfaces and making use of unused wall space. These little wood boxes from the Dollar Tree also make great organizers. They come with little crates, these little boxes that have drawers in them, also these little holders that come in all types of different styles. And what's neat about these as well is that you can also use them if you're homeschooling as a arts and craft project and then it also in turn becomes an organizer afterward. Then if you wanted to hang these on the wall, you can use either the removable strips or that wonderful Gorilla mounting tape. And then here you can see them on the wall and you can use them in all types of different various combinations and the possibilities are endless. These colorful bins are also great organizers and can help in a color coordinated organization effort. You can organize by child or by contents. And what's neat is that they also stack and you can sit them neatly on a shelf. Now, if you don't have any shelf space, here's a great wall mounting option using these Dollar Tree dish racks. Now, I just wanna point out that Dollar Tree does sell two different ones, so it could get a little confusing. Um, they have these larger ones and these smaller ones, but more often than not, I do see the smaller ones, so I'm gonna go ahead and just use those for these examples. So all I'm gonna to need to do is slightly bend these brackets upwards, and then I can just hang it on the wall like so, and then you can see how these bins fit perfectly in the slots and they'll stay nice and secure they fit that well and then when i pull one out the others stay in place now if you do want a little more traction on your brackets we can use our old rubber band trick and just take those nice thick rubber bands and place them around the brackets and I'll probably put about seven or so uh, rubber bands on each bracket. I'm just gonna, again, make sure that they're nice and straight. And then that will give more traction on the bin. However, these particular storage containers, they do fit so nicely in the rack that, um, and the rubber bands make it a little harder to get them in and out. So I might not use them for those, but for these ones here, like these acrylic organizers and these smaller organizers, the rubber bands are really critical. You really need those for these items. And then you can see here a combination of these other items. You could use all the same ones depending on what your needs are or a combination like this one. And this rack will work great for all these types of thinner organization items. But if you are looking at some of the thicker or taller bins, we have to do a little change. So for example, if I wanted to use one of these larger, taller bins, I'm going to need to remove some of these brackets. And I'm gonna just use my wire cutters to go in and take that second bracket out and then that second from the last bracket out. Now you can see that creates some space for my larger bins to fit in. Then I'm going to just go ahead and bend those up again a little bit and add my rubber bands. And then you can see how it will securely hold my bins. And then another option will be these little white bins. And then here you can see again, both options hanging on the wall. And then that's it, 38 or more, depending on how you count them, organization hacks. But please join me soon for the third edition of this series, where I will be focusing on the area or areas most requested in the comments below. So be sure to comment on your preference. As mentioned previously, I will also be shooting for 39 ideas in the next video. So please cheer me on to my goal by liking and sharing this video. And don't forget to subscribe so that you see the new ones as soon as they're published. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on FabTax, where we're putting the extra in ordinary, one DIY at a time.